Hello everyone, my name is Dedrek and welcome to Historical Trash Box where we talk about history in a trashiest way. And today we will do our second and final part of World War One. So let's just let's just get into it. There's nothing really more to uh, to talk about. Uh, you guys want to say anything before we start? Uh, nope, good here. All right, yeah. Well, yeah. Let's get into it then. So where we left off was I think like when it was starting to become a stalemate. So let's move on to the, like the Pacific and the Eastern Front. I don't know if we talked about that last time. But Germany had a ton, a ton of colonies in the Pacific. These colonies would include German Samoa, German New Guinea, just, just to name a few. These were strategic areas to attack. To attack. So Great Britain asked Japan, who was a friend of them, to take all those colonies. And well, Japan did, with very low resistance. India, which was actually occupied by Britain at the time, declared war on the Ottoman Empire, who was supporting the their occupant's enemy, Germany. Okay, that, that sentence didn't make any sense, but... <laughs> but yeah, so Japan was at war with the colonies of Germany in the Pacific, and, the, and uh, India was at war with the Ottoman Empire. Because at the time they had border, they had very close borders with them. So, uh, yeah, you guys want to say anything before I continue on? Yeah, it's very, it's very Pacific of them to take that. Pacific. Yeah, Pacific. Pacific. <laughs> You're very funny. Yeah, very funny man. Thanks for my stand-up comedy. Just look out. That's all you deserve. All right. Uh, so we got nothing else to say. All right. Nope. Let's get. All right, let's continue. So to continue on the topic of the Ottoman Empire, the country was split on the topic of joining the Central Powers, a.k.a. Germany and Austria-Hungary, or the Triple Entente, which was France, Great Britain, and Russia. So the country accidentally bombed some tankers that were moving through northern Ottoman territory because at the time they weren't so sure, but that northern territory was still friends with... Uh, Russia until they decided to bomb them. So the guys that were the guys that bombed them went to like the border of whatever of the Ottoman Empire and just like whoops, I guess we're at war with uh with Great Britain now and with the Allies now. So yeah, they didn't settle an agreement, but all the Triple Entente just declared war on them and left at that. Yeah, they the Ottomans would have some small bows with the British and the and the Russians and even the Greeks, and would lose most except would lose almost every single one of those battles except for some defensive ones. They initially blamed their losses on the ethnic Armenians that were living in the northeastern bit of the Ottoman Empire. This blame caused the execution of about one million ethnic Armenians in about twenty days, the second deadliest moment in the war. Jesus. That's, that's bad. That's really bad. Yeah, yeah, God. All right, you guys want to say anything before I continue on? My, my throat's getting a bit parched, so I'm going to take a sip. You guys want to say something? Hmm. I feel like all they had to do to avoid war was just say no, t just say take backsies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, I, I, I like, man, I, I, I don't know, man. Take backsies. I just, here's, here's five bucks. Go buy yourself something nice. <laughs> go buy yourself a country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they go. Go take Greece or some. Go yeah, take Greece. Yeah, here, 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 you know what? You know what? Here, have my have my pet ferret as well. <laughs> His name what? is Jablinski. <laughs> Jablinski. All right, let's continue onward. All right, so now we're going on to the topic of the Eastern Front, which can be summed up pretty pretty easy, but it could be a video on its own. Well, on the Eastern Front, we had Austria, Hungary, and Germany versus Russia. The leader of Russia at the time was Nicholas II. He thought he was the most badass man in Europe. <laughs> he thought so. He thought he could just steamroll steamroll through Germany and Austria-Hungary like they were nothing. He was so cocky, he made him commander-in-chief of the Russian army. Russia was almost annihilated. <laughs> <laughs> they had really no major victories against Germany and Austria-Hungary. And then midway through the war, we had Russia... We had uh, the Russian Revolution, which could get a video on its own one day. Mm -hmm. And 
Yeah, mm. damn Lenin and what, whatever. Just to sum that up. Yeah, they Stalin. the Russians that Russians they thought they were badass at the time. Emil annihilated in nearly three years. <laughs> All right. I feel like they should have just like uh, challenged them to like a bio wrestling contest, then they would have won. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Put fools. All right. What smooth brains. So you guys want to say anything on... We're going to move on to, like, the stalemate of the thing because I pretty much just summed up the Pacific Front and the Eastern Front right there. So you guys want to say anything before we continue on the stalemate? No. Nine. All right. No. <clears throat> Voice cracks beyond belief. All right. So the year was... So the great stalemate was around... Started what really hyped up in the 1916... It was a period of the war called the Great Stalemate. In this period, all fronts had completely stopped advances. The reason why was on the Western Front, trench systems were being constructed, and the Eastern Front, it was getting cold there, which halted the war. In the Balkan Front, it was being halted for the same reason as the Eastern Front and a bit of the Western Front. It was getting cold and they were making trenches. There was a lot more fronts that had a lot more reasons of going into stalemate, but all those had their own reasons, and yeah, they pretty much just had no no way to continue forward because neither side would go forward because it was either too cold, too hot, or it they just built trenches and just barely moved at all. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, pretty stale, you could say. It was like a stale Lay's chips. Mm. All right, you guys want to say anything it. before I continue? <laughs> Well, uh, I can't believe they had to give them the cold so cold shoulder. <laughs> they must have, they you got must jokes, I knew you. <laughs> they, they, they must have cold feet. Oh my god. Uh, it wasn't very ice of them to do that, not gonna lie. Okay. Okay, you're just turning into a damn dad now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that entire thing is just basically like buying lace chips and getting like chips in your airbag. <laughs> so just so disappointing, man. <laughs> it's like I paid for air, not chips. Yeah, excuse man. me, excuse me, ma'am. Mine doesn't have ninety percent air. It has, like yeah, it has only eighty-six <laughs> percent. Oh, I want to see your manager. All right, all right. Let's get let's get back on track. So now we're gonna focus on the turning point because that stalemate was really only for the entire year of nineteen sixteen, which is a long time, but. Voice cracks. <clears throat> All right. At this point, the, the war had run every country down to the bone. There were mutinies in the French army. The German populace was starving. And Russia was in the middle of a revolution, which we will do a video soon, as I said earlier. This revolution in Russia caused the country to surrender to the central powers. This was great news for Germany. Just one large problem. The USA was looking looking like it would join the war because of the sinking of the Lusitania, which caused which caused the deaths of nearly 200 Americans. It'd be oh, looking a little spicy. Can you see okay. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Sorry, Papa. <laughs> In response, Germany sent a telegram to Mexico saying that if they distracted the USA, they would give them anything they wanted. Fortunately... Great Britain intercepted this telegram, gave it to the Americans, and that was the last straw. So an American, American second, no, April yeah. second, <laughs> April second of nineteen seventeen, the USA declared war on the Central Powers. So uh, I put my input. Yep. All right. So basically, <laughs> what happened was angry, angry cowboys, angry cowboys versus Germans. Who would win? Angry Cowboys. Obviously. Yeah. All right. Let I think, <laughs> silence. Yeah, just <laughs> silence. Nothing is being said. <laughs> uh, reminds me back in the war. Back in Nam. No wrong war. All right. Well, that's gonna. I think I can. I think I can wrap this up really quickly. Just a little bit left to go. Alright, so the USA's entrance in the war was horrible news for the Central Powers. They mm -hmm. had to act quick if they wanted to win this war. So, 
Austria-Hungary launched a second invasion of, on Serbia, finally taking them out. That was the reason why this war was started, and it took them there six years. It took them four years to take them out. Jesus. And Efficiency. The, yep. <laughs> mm. The then Germany launched a uh, massive offensive on the Western Front, finally making forward progress in nearly two years on the Western Front. But the more and more resources that Germany used, the less and less power they powerful they became. They became so weak that the Allied powers, which the USA was growing in massive numbers in Europe at this time, stopped them riding the tracks and even pushed them back, and that was the last offensive that Germany would make. The last chance of them winning the war was a failure, and over the next three months or so, all the Central Powers were ten would surrender. Bulgaria fell first, followed by the Ottoman Empire, then Austria-Hungary, and finally on November 11th on 1918, 1918, at the 11th hour of the 11th minute, Germany finally surrendered. This war would be like no other. It would be like it wouldn't be like any other war anyone had seen before. There were more deaths and more carnage than any other war previously. It would stay this way for only about 20 years. <laughs> Eek, piss of us. All right, well, that's World War One. That yeah. ended fast. Yeah, just that, like the war. That was that was World War One right there. So, yeah, you guys have any closing words you want to say? Basically, yeah. Germany do big, dumb, and fail war. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, they do. Um, honestly, Wonder Woman one was terrible. Not gonna lie. <laughs> nah. What? No, Wonder Woman one was good. The second one was crap. Ah, uh, okay. Wait. So what? So what we're talking about again? I we're, <laughs> we're talking about, about World War One as some closing words, but I guess yeah, we're talking yeah, about yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. WW one Wonder Woman. Ah, guys. You know, if Germany, yeah, if Germany just got Wonder Woman, like they would have won so easily. Yeah, but didn't Wonder Woman go to Britain? Yep. Yeah. Why, All right. why would she go to Germany? I don't know. I don't know. They should have got Batman. <laughs> she probably didn't speak German. She was afraid she'd get like bullied by like the other people there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're German. just going into straight fiction now, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's the end of the episode, fellas. So uh, I love I love you guys and have a good day and gals. Goodbye.